as you guys remember, which I want to start out with a thank you, uh, yesterday was a little weird for me. So um, we've been talking about the Alex Jones thing a lot this week, and my take on it is that while I totally despise everything Alex Jones is about, uh, I think it's important that we use the First Amendment and that Facebook, because of how big it is, be designated a utility. Um, I know some of you don't use Facebook. That's fine. You don't have to. But um, the reality is a lot of people do. And at this point, it should be designated a utility because of how big it is and how essential it is to the public square, quote-unquote. So, and for me personally, when I was locked out of Facebook yesterday, which some of you that were on the show, uh, on the stream yesterday, you remember that, I was locked out of Facebook randomly. I don't know why. I'm, I'm not going to over-speculate as to why. I'm back on now. But for some reason, I could not get on. And I know that's happened to other people before. Other people have gotten random bans for random things. And for me... You know, Facebook is something that I still use a lot professionally. Um, I book a lot of shows via Facebook. I network via Facebook. I join groups for stand-up via Facebook. Um, I find out about events via Facebook. So, you know, I mean, I mean, some people were tweeting me and they're like, well, who cares? It's Facebook and I, I boycott Facebook. All power to you. Good for you. But, um, you know, it is very, in very many ways, the electronic public square. And it is a kind of essential resource for information for a lot of people, myself included. Um, does that have some causes for alarm? Sure. But that's just the reality. So my question for the day, one thing that happened to me is... Um, when I got back in, I was kind of weirded out by the whole thing. I didn't know why I couldn't get in. I and I did post that I think that they should follow the First Amendment and I think they should be a utility. And I thought, man, if that was, if by chance they were, you know, doing this intentionally and it wasn't just a tech glitch, which I'm not going to over speculate one way or the other. But if it was, I couldn't help thinking, like, gee, that's all, that's all I did to get you know, kind of, kind of blacklisted, that's crazy. Um, and it, and it made me think about all the contacts I need and all the information I need and all the stuff that I need, you know, like, like it made me think about all that and it kind of, uh, you know, I was a little alarmed. I was a little distracted. A lot of you guys could tell, I think. And, uh, by the way, my quick thank you to kind of divert here for a little bit. Um, for a little bit, I was getting, I was kind of getting in my head about it. And I wasn't necessarily, like, overly stressing about it. But I was a little stressed out. Um, Rebecca, by the way, they did not tell me. They told me nothing. I just could not get into, I just couldn't get in. That's all. Um, I was told nothing. Um... So no, they didn't tell me anything. So, you know, I thought about all that. And one of the things I did when I got back in was I, uh, I deleted all of my personal info. Um, I deleted um, information about my family. You know how like you could list your family. And I never listed anybody, but some people listed me. I deleted all that. Um, and I deleted my relationship. And uh, it felt weird when I did it because, you know, me and my girlfriend are totally fine. It's not like our relationship, you know, and I told her before I did it so she didn't just see, oh, my boyfriend's not in a relationship with me anymore via Facebook, apparently. Like, I told her what happened and I told her that I decided to do this. And, um, but it's weird, just for a side note, whenever you end a relationship on Facebook, they give you the option to like not see posts from that person because they assume that um they assume that you actually broke up right 
So they give you, they're like, do you need a break? And then, so I had to see this do you need a break thing and then a picture of my girlfriend who I'm quite happy with. And I saw it and I was just like, I, I got mad. I was like, fuck you. This isn't her. This is you. This has nothing to do with her. Like, I actually got angry about it. And so my question is, and I, I know I, I, I went a long way to get here, and I, I apologize for that. But my question is, what's the happy, what's the happy medium? I mean, look, um, Nick Carr wrote a book called The Shallows, and the truth is, is that once technology is there, it doesn't necessarily go away. It evolves, but it doesn't go away. So this idea of we're just going to ignore the electronic public square, if you can do it in your life, all power to you. I can't in mine. I just can't. Maybe it has something to do with my line of work, but I just can't. Um, I need Facebook. And I, well, you know what? Let me, let me back up. Let me rephrase that. I need an electronic public square. And right now, the big behemoths in the room are Facebook and YouTube. Will I evolve with the mediums like everyone else? Of course I will. At least I hope so. Um, but I need that. However, on, on the other side of it, I had no problem deleting my personal information. I, I don't feel like, like, you know, my girlfriend and I had dinner and we took a walk and we went to the gym. Something we usually do on, on an evening. And um, it didn't didn't change anything it wasn't like we felt any weirder because we we weren't on facebook you know she didn't even care i just told her and she's like yeah whatever you have to do um so and when i see people and i'm sure you guys know people like this in your life and, and maybe you are somebody that does this but whenever i see people sharing all of their kind of dirty laundry, quote unquote, on Facebook, I see it as a red flag. I see it as, okay, you know, especially like if they're, if they're really airing out information on their personal relationship and they're kind of shitting on another person, you know, like maybe they had a bad breakup that they're, they're totally shitting on the other person and oversharing on a public forum. Um, I see that as, I kind of see that as a red flag in general, and it makes me very, um, very kind of skeptical of that person's decision making. So I guess my question is like, what's what's the happy meeting? And and again, some of you you got off Facebook, I'll power to you. Uh, but I know some of you are also like me, and you really do need that electronic public square right now. Facebook is the big behemoth in the room. Will that always be the case? Probably not. Uh, well, definitely not. But right now, that's the case. The younger generation's moving away from Facebook, so that won't be the case forever. But right now, that's the case. So what's that happy medium, you know? I mean, I, mean, I think use it for mostly professional purposes. I mostly, for Facebook, I post jokes, I post articles, I share content, I talk about events. And um, I use it a little bit to keep in touch. I found out about my high school reunion uh, via Facebook. It's a high school reunion. I'm not going to be going to anyway. Um, just cause I don't, it, it's not worth traveling 3000 miles for most of my friends in high school that I care to still be in contact with. I am in contact with thanks to Facebook though. Honestly, I mean, Facebook has helped me, um, keep in touch with a lot of people and I do appreciate that part of it. Um, on the same note, when I see people air out all their dirty laundry, I find that to be a little disturbing. Um, and I had no problems deleting the personal information that I was never 100% comfortable with it being there anyway. Why does Facebook need to know who my mom is? Why does Facebook need to know who my girlfriend is? Um, and especially with everything that's been going on recently, I think me deleting all that information was in many ways a long time coming, and yesterday, for me, was just sort of the straw that broke the camel's back. I spent way too much time babbling about this. Uh, <laughs> so let's see what you guys are saying. What's the happy medium? Hey, Mars. I think it's best to just use it professionally. 
Um, Facebook kept me in vicious cycles of negativity based on the things I was following. It is way too toxic. I think it certainly can be. Absolutely. It pisses me off when my dad checks us in everywhere. <laughs> it, right? Dude, I... And that wasn't directed at you. I don't know your gender. I'm not trying to. That, that was just a... That was just a gender neutral aside that happened to be the word dude coming out of my mouth. Um, but I, uh, I noticed that, yeah, it is a lot of times, and if you're around my age, it is like our parents that get like super kind of Orwellian with it, where they're like, I want to check us in. Yeah, let's check us in here. Let's report every bear, beer we drank. Like, dude, <laughs> let's not. <laughs> let's not check us in here, but yeah. My girlfriend's dad actually was checking us in everywhere we went. Or trying to. He wanted to check us in. He actually can't use Facebook on his phone, so he didn't, but yeah. I joined progressive groups. I joined for rallies. I don't put any drama on Facebook. I never put drunk photos or anything embarrassing because even employers look up your Facebook. That's very true, Jennifer. That's very true. Uh, Daniel, Ron, I don't think you're paranoid at all. Paranoia is just acute awareness. They see the soapbox despite the size of any platform. As long as you're gaining ground, there are going to be eyes on you. Maybe. Peter Douche says, I suggest airing your personal laundry on Twitter instead. Make sure to add a Bernie hashtag. <laughs> By the way, guys, November 2nd, Sacramento, California. November 3rd, San Francisco, California. Graham Elwood and I are going to be there. You can get tickets now at romplacone.com. And who's going to be opening the show? My favorite Twitter Democratic strategist, Peter Douche. He's watching the stream right now. He's going to be opening those shows in Sacramento and San Francisco. Can't wait to see you, Northern California. Somebody actually told me that's technically Central California. I live in Los Angeles, so I've always considered Sacramento and San Francisco, Northern California. But, uh... Wherever you can consider it in relation to California, gonna be there. And Peter Douche is gonna be there too. So, uh, and you can get tickets now at romplacone.com. Tickets are available now. Grab them. Uh, Balthazar says, screw Facebook, I'm going back to Friendster. <laughs> Balthazar also says that Miss Cleo is a happy medium. And Balthazar says, I imagine Mark Z asking cues whenever Facebook asks them. That's actually, uh, that's actually a good idea. That's whenever Facebook's like, hey, do you want do you want us to remember this memory for you? Imagine Mark Zuckerberg asking you that. And then imagine him calling you a dumb fuck. Imagine being like, hey, do you need a break from this person, you dumb fuck? No, Mark Zuckerberg, I didn't actually break up with anybody. I just don't want this information on Facebook anymore. That's what I don't want. <laughs> That's good advice. Get you with Ron, don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron, don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your news on with Ron.